Good day, and welcome to the um, Cove uh, show. Uh, we're uh, members of the uh, committee on elder, um, Vermont elders, Vermont elders. Mm -hmm. and my name is Don McDonald, and uh, Tony Reddington is uh, with me, and Linda Della Duca is also with me. Have them introduce themselves. Or Hi, I'm uh, from uh, Tony Reddington. Again, I'm from, uh, I'm from like Don and uh, Linda. I'm from Burlington. I live uh, in the Old North End, and uh, uh, my areas of primary uh, area of interest is uh, transportation and transportation safety. Um, and I do have a background also in housing, housing planning. And I'm Linda Della Duca, and I'm from Burlington too. I'm a retired teacher, and my ba main interest is in issues around housing and nutrition and um, medical needs for seniors and our growing uh, concern about our growing population of seniors in Vermont. And my name is Don McDonald and uh, I'm with um, Vermont Alliance, uh, VCAP, Vermont Community Alliance for Public Transportation. Uh, I've been involved with public transportation in Vermont for quite a while and like Tony and like um, uh, like Linda, we're on the uh, policy committee for Cove. Um, we have uh, a few questions, or question and answer. Uh, first one, wh what is Cove? Maybe, Linda, you could give us an idea. Uh, sure. Uh, Cove was established in 1981, and basically it started out as a group of people who were doing provider uh, service providing for seniors, mm -hmm. and they were separate organizations, and they realized they would have a stronger voice and stronger advocacy if they joined. So COVE really stands for the Community of Vermont Elders, and you can be a member like the retired teachers from Vermont are members, and nutrition groups are members, but also individuals are, mm -hmm. are members. And they are have maintained a very strong and consistent voice in public policy decisions around senior issues in, in Vermont. For example, like, you know, people say, well, the, a bus goes a certain route, anybody can get on it. But if you're a senior, maybe the distance is too much or uh, the bus doesn't run at convenient times, you know, they, and so on. So um, we sort of advocate for the fact that there's a large number of people in Vermont who are not 25 years old and it make uh, it a, the public policy makers aware of senior issues. Yeah, that's um, Tony. Um, one of my interests, uh, Don, has, has been the, uh, and, and it's been thanks a, a great deal to Linda again, is uh, as a, a recent uh, member, like as you are, to the policy committee, has been the demographics or the change in population of seniors in, uh, in Vermont. And as we looked into the the uh, projections, the official state projections of population for uh, Vermont for the period 2010 to 2030. Mm -hmm. We're right in the middle of that 20 year period. This is 2020. Um, the projections uh, are, were quite uh, startling. Um, and if you average the look, look, if you evaluate the and look at those projections, it showed that Vermont for over a 20 year period starting in 2010 and we're going through 2030, there would be 4,000 more seniors, 4,000 more persons 65 and older every year yeah. adding to our population. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, as I think we all know, uh, we have a, uh, we've had a baby bust and a lot less kids and there's big fights going on among a lot of towns of what they're gonna do to consolidate their schools. Why? Because we have, we have actually had a, uh, having a decrease in under 65 population. So the seniors are growing, the non-seniors are declining. And that means uh, two things. First, uh, we as seniors and on Cove have a larger uh, uh, group of uh, uh, increasing market, you might say, that needs services uh, and, and health care and transportation. That is a growing need. And so therefore, there's more of a need for Cove than ever, so to speak because of the demographics. Um. Yeah. No, and, and I, I think a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that the, the <clears throat> population turning 65 has implications not only in the area, for example, that I mentioned of transportation, but in medical care yep. 
and for example, having doctor's offices not accessible to public transportation is, is, becomes a problem. Nutrition becomes a problem. We're concerned about housing for seniors, for example, if there are two people on Social Security living in a house and one person dies, the Social Security income drops and often they can no longer maintain their housing. And then, the, of course, the issues around maintaining your housing because of it's either not accessible or it's difficult to live in. But, but economically, it's a huge issue around the state for the number of people who can no longer afford to live in their housing. Um, the, one of the things, the main thing I'm concerned with is transportation. And transportation for seniors, it was the mention of uh, the, um, especially with the medical uh, facilities around the Burlington area, Chittenden County, Northern Vermont, one of the problems is Tilly Drive. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that's probably the toughest problem around the Burlington area. It not only affects seniors, it, it affects everybody. It affects the uh, refugee community. Um, it, they used to get their services from the um, community health center right over here on, on Riverside Ave, about a block down from where yeah. we are now. And they switched that out to Tilly Drive. Uh, now, oh. you can't get a bus to Tilly Drive. And it's right. a long, long walk from the nearest bus station, pr pretty much close to a mile if you have a And there aren't sidewalks even. No, no, well, they did put it in a couple of I mean, this is real rudimentary stuff, but you're right. There's no sidewalks. They're not adequate. There's some new parts of sidewalk they put in, mainly because they have new housing going in. Right. You know, and the maddening part is they've tried the SSTA uh, with a shuttle service from the Union uh, University, uh, University Mall, Mall. Yeah. and uh, you have to make a reservation two days in advance, and you have to make the connection. In other words, if the number one bus coming from downtown is two minutes or five minutes off, which you, you can happen a lot because you have to go through Dorset Street and Williston mm -hmm. Road and that area, uh, you, you, you're out of luck. You can't right. make it. And the, the thing is that the experience now with the SSTA is that their numbers are way down um, because the people just can't make the connection. Right. right. Um, there, one thing I think would work, if they had a bus running from directly from the community health center out to Tilly Drive and just shuttle back and forth between those two points, mm -hmm. maybe making a stop at the downtown transit center or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the cost of that is high. And so the cost has to be, would be borne by GMTA or in the way the structure that, that they have now, I understand it's borne by GMTA. Uh, the, the developers, uh, the hospital and the developers are the ones that are making, are benefiting from the Tilly Drive situation. Some of these other satellites, I use Tilly Drive because it's been there a while, it's got a history. But some of these other uh, <coughs> satellite operations that are opening up, I was at the VA the other day, for example, and that's down on Pine Street. And that's uh, in the old General Electric building in mm -hmm. the defense plant. And it's about uh, about 1,500 feet from the nearest bus stop to the VA, and I have high blood pressure. And the docs for a while were getting on my back, but they're not doing it anymore. They say, well, Mac, let me tell you, that's a long walk from the bus stop to the second floor here. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe, that's one of the problems that we have. Right, well, and you know, the thing is that I've noticed being involved in this for a few years is that they're so all intertwined. Uh, the the four issues that I, that I mentioned: transportation, right. medical care, right. housing, and nutrition. And if you can't coordinate those, and if they're off by a little, they might as well be off by a lot. Yep. On a really uh, in Vermont weather in the winter, to say, well, there's a bus stop three blocks away. If you're not able to walk three blocks, it might as well be six miles. Yeah. And that impacts your ability to get to grocery stores, to the senior center, to how, to nutrition right. places. It impacts your medical care and it impacts the housing. And I know we, we were all at a meeting when we were talking with some people from transportation and they said, 
well, people are going to have to give up their houses in the country and they're going to have to move into more congregated areas. But I thought the Vermont policy was people could age in place. And yeah, if, right. if you age in place, that doesn't mean you necessarily want to live in downtown urban areas. You, you want to age where you right. where your place is, right? So that's, and that's a, becoming an increasing problem. I know we were talking about it on, on the uh, Vermont Poverty Council, and we were saying that the baseline we have to worry about is housing, because if you don't get stable housing, then it, transportation gets to be a challenge, right. nutrition gets to be a challenge, and, and medical care. You know, it's not only with people in our age group, it's, it's throughout. We've had uh, problems uh, retaining people right here at Channel 17. Um, we've had situations where people have moved in and they haven't been able to find adequate housing after a year or two. Right. And because it's too expensive, that's mm -hmm. the problem. There are things that are not so much in place here in the States, but say like in, in Canada, in Quebec, you have a central housing and mortgage situation. Right. And it's, you know, it's, it, there's, for instance, well, they're just, there just are ways that they have of taking well, care well, of let me, it. Let me go, uh, you, let me talk, I'd like to offer uh, something that looks like some good news uh, that we're, uh, uh, that, that could make a real change, at least in transportation. <clears throat> and that is, there's been a discussion, as you know, on our uh, Cove Policy Committee of uh, fare free transit now for some months. Right. Uh, it's one of, uh, certainly a priority, uh, uh, one of, you know, expanding public transportation is one of our policy priorities. Explain what that means. Uh, and so fare free transit would, would basically mean this, that, um, well, let's take the example, uh, White River, right. uh, the, the two state, uh, uh, local transportation service uh, that serves Lebanon, uh, Hanover, and White River Junction area is actually does have free yep. uh, fares today. In other words, you just get on the bus uh, and to where you want to go and you don't have to fidget Foil, in your pocket right. to find 50 cents or a dollar or whatever or pull out a card and have it in a machine that yeah. doesn't work. As you point out, Don, a lot of these, these fare, fare collection machines, they break down and, and the, the uh, Driver doesn't have to try to explain, away, explain yeah. what's going on or, or, or have to worry about or wait for the, these, peop, these, these uh, passengers to get on. Anyway, the point is, it's free. Yeah. And most, uh, in our local transit systems in Vermont, the amount of money that's collected at the fare box is about 10% of the total cost yeah, of operating. Yeah. So to say fare-free transit is going to cost a lot of money, it doesn't cost that much, but you get a tremendous benefit because uh, you can expect anywhere from a 40%, on average, a 40% increase uh, in number of passengers, plus the savings to the, the uh, local transit operators and not having to count the money every night and put it in the bank and, and buy the equipment to, to, uh, uh, to, to handle the uh, tickets and the money. So, and it's uh, also in, an in, environmental. Well, this is the, the, the that's yeah. the point. Suddenly, uh, pu pu uh, free public transit and encouraging public transit is very popular with the climate change issue, uh, and and also the legislature is looking and the governor, uh, and other political leaders are looking for a win. Well, here's a win yes. for, without without a great deal, maybe a couple million dollars difference mm -hmm. uh, in cost that would have tremendous benefit to local communities, to us, to our seniors, right. who we're most concerned about, and to help boost. Uh, further discussion of the connections to Tilly Drive and other problems within each area. So um, uh, talk to your local representative. Uh, I think you're going to hear a lot more, uh, more about f uh, fare free transit and it, uh, 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 for Burlington, uh, we would be one of the biggest beneficiaries. The, uh, the thing about its cost benefit ratio, um, the fare box is uh, the, uh, in Burlington, the collections are, are high compared to national. In other words, we collect a large percentage, but the percentage is not, when you dollarize it, yeah. and you also add on, you have to think, of, they cause controversy a lot. There's arguments, yep. there's weights, there's people that are cold, it's cold weather. And when you have, and when somebody pays with any kind of coin, it seems to have a problem. and. Uh, you well, know, we that, have the Canadian Inc American coin thing. Well, yeah, too. but the, yeah, but, but they don't. The, the, that's actually the, that adds to it, I yeah, think, in the way because well, you don't look at it. The fares box isn't set up for Canadian money, really? okay? And 
we have a lot of visitors from Montreal. Uh -huh. And okay. so therefore, that creates an issue, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there's just negative issues mm -hmm. with it. And when you sit down with a pencil and you figure this stuff out, um, it, it doesn't make a whole bunch of sense to have a fair box recovery system. Well, think, I mean, uh, just, just think for a moment, um, uh, and I'm, I'm into statistics and data, but even I uh, am, am uh, uh, amazed the fact that the people, the low-income area, and I live in the old north end, yeah. uh, uh, along with King Maple, the two neighborhoods with the lowest incomes in the city. But in the old north end, almost uh, about one in three households has no access to a car. Right. Mm -hmm. So they are dependent upon walking, bicycling, and public transit. Yep. So this is not an academic issue. Um, one of the suggest one of the comments uh, about fare free transit from the public transit uh, um, office in in, in uh, Montpelier was that well you're going to have uh, um, a lot of the people who will be taking advantage of this will be low income um, and seniors and um, yeah. I being a senior and but I'm I'm not that low income. I'm saying, well, that's exactly why we should have low uh, mm. fare free transit because seniors and those of low income are prevented from getting to the store, doing trips to, to uh, for medical or social appointments because of even 75 cents or a dollar per ride uh, well, bar uh, financial barrier. Then just to weigh in on this a little bit, having grandchildren who are in their 20s, they don't own cars. Yeah, I know. They use a lot of younger people That's are right. now using public transit right. too. Well, Let's get back to some of the Cove things though, sure. because we're um, going to run out of time. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the second question here is why was Cove developed? Well, as I think I said, because we wanted to have a stronger united voice. Um, so people like um, AARP, people from nutrition fields, people from um, areas of transportation all connected with housing people, all get together. And Cove is a coalition right. of all of these people. Mm -hmm. And I think a fairly effective lobbyist for sure. senior issues. Um, okay, what was the main focus? What is the main focus of Cove? Well, right now, uh, I just I have a list right here in front of me of the uh, areas that we uh, lobby on. And when we say lobby, it means we have a we do have some paid lobbyists, and we do have a paid director, and the, as well as volunteers like the three of us, uh, who do our best to to uh, to, to uh, bring information to the legislators and to, and to watch important legislation. Okay, our policies uh, that we uh, agreed on last uh, summer uh, for this for this year are, uh, and I'll just list them. Uh, they're not necessarily an area of priority. Uh, obviously, health care reform and medical consumer rights, uh, long-term care. Um, senior housing that Linda's re referred to, transportation that you and I particularly work, work on, Don, protection of vulnerable adults. Uh, this is the area where particularly those in nursing homes or uh, in, in, uh, who are ill in hospitals and so forth where uh, it's, it's very important. Uh, there's a real issue of making sure that those, those people are not exploited uh, at all. Uh, then, of course, fuel assistance, which we're very sensitive to here in Vermont, uh, good nutrition, um, and uh, senior housing, uh, fair taxation. Uh, we are a member of the uh, One Vermont that seeks both tax reform for fairer taxes as well as recognizing, hey, our population is going. We're going to need some more money to, to provide right. uh, services. Uh, and then finally, um, as we mentioned, uh, we work with other groups uh, on uh, shared concerns, whether it be the, uh, 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 whether it be uh, uh, those who are like ARP or uh, Green Mountain Care Board and so forth. Uh, we, we try to work with other groups uh, on, on yeah. common issues. One thing we also do is the growing uh, population of kinship families, which are families because of the opioid epidemic, oh. uh, ended up that grandparents and aunts and uncles are ending up raising grandchildren right. and. Um, that has become a growing concern because you have people who are um, caregiving for them, their elderly parents, and also raising grandchildren. And then, in some cases, it is actually the elderly, elderly grandparents who are raising young children, and they find themselves with their own health issues and then having a three-year-old or a four-year-old. Right. 
Exactly. Yeah. And so that's another area that we've been raising awareness of because the legislature wasn't really aware. There's probably, um, if we were to use national statistics, they would say 20,000. I would say it's a little less, 15,000 kids in the state of Vermont that are not in foster care but are living with relatives. And they may have set up their, their lifestyle they didn't think that they were going to be buying $100 sneakers and feeding the, the, the appetite of a 15-year-old football right. player. You know, so their, their whole financial and housing and social life is all designed right. around uh, being a senior. Right. And all of a sudden, they find themselves going to soccer games and buying <laughs> sneakers. You know? um, so uh, and we try to cover a, a large area sure. of, of senior yeah. issues. Uh, uh, how can individuals uh, join Cove? The, if you go to the Cove website, you can donate and you can become a member. Mm -hmm. And there are quite a few groups, service groups, and service providers that are members. Um, as I said, Vermont retired teachers are, are members. And then individuals can join. And I think it's like $35. I mm -hmm. may be off a little, no, but I think correct. it's yeah. about. Um, and I think it's a, a worthwhile organization what, because that helps pay for a very limited staff, like one, one and a half people kind yeah. of thing, yeah. but also pays for a, a lobbyist who is uh, in Montpelier to be at the legislature in the committee room saying, how is this going to impact seniors? Right. Which is you know, often something that they're not thinking about the unintended consequences of a particular item may impact seniors in a different way than it does other people. That's true. Um, this is the big point. Uh, it, I mean, well, how do they join? Uh, they, the they can, they, anybody can just send the $35 to the Cove. If you go online, you can get their email address or their, their address. I think it's a Main Street address now, but if you go to Cove, send uh, in a, Montpelier, right? Yeah, they're in Montpelier, and if you just send an envelope to Cove, Montpelier, Vermont, I'm sure they'd get yeah, the they'd $35 and be happy to have it. Uh, they're also, out of Cove, they've developed, uh, it's called the Older Vermonters Caucus, which is now meeting weekly in, at the leg when the legislature's in session. Again, trying to raise the concern and the issues around the, the demographics that Tony mentioned of the, the town of, what, Stowe plus? That's correct. Uh, we have uh, this this year, 2020. We're going to have uh, 4,000 seniors uh, uh, join the rest of us, and uh, those 4,000 are equal to the total population of Stowe, Vermont. That's true. that's a lot of yeah. that's a lot of seniors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's almost so as big as it's almost as much as the Newport. Right. Which is one of the newest cities. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was 100 years last year or the year before. Yeah, but we, you don't real when you say the equivalent to the town of Stowe. Yeah. In this small state is turning 65, and we, in the other end, we're living longer. Well, that's true. The the thing is, Stowe is also um, um, an, an interesting. Yeah. You, know, you, you have this is this is where the ski bums come in. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe we should. Years we better switch this to uh, Woods uh, to uh, Bennington or something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. but but kind of interestingly. The fact that I'm on a pension board for retired teachers, and we're looking at the demographics, and not only are more people, people turning 65, but the people who have turned 65, their life, expe yeah, life, expe life expectancy, <laughs> so they're just the bulk of the numbers of people that are, that are 65 yeah. and over is, is becoming an, a major concern. Uh, in fact, we've just decided, looking at retired teachers, there are many small towns in Vermont that could not operate without the volunteer efforts of the retired yeah, that's quite fire true. citizens in their town right. to, to staff the libraries, to run the after-school programs, to do uh, work in the uh, town clerk's offices. All of that is being yeah. done by seniors now. Yeah, the, uh, the thing is that a lot, lot of people, we had a population burst, uh, jump uh, between 1960, 1970, I think, and 1980, the hippies 60 to 80, came in, yeah. yeah. Well, we're all 
in our 70s and 80s. Right, know. exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, you got to do the math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, what, what's amazing, uh, one number I happen to remember, because it's an easy one, the growth of the state of Vermont, total population between 2010 and 2018. That's uh, eight years out of the, you know, right. 777 yeah. additional people That's living right. in yeah, Vermont. Um, you're, you're right, we had the baby boom come through there in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and now uh, we're in the baby bust, and our population is just flat. Well, oh. the thing is that the state also promotes Vermont as a retirement community in a lot of ways. Yep. Back, uh, I can remember in the 60s, it was promoted as beckoning country. Right. Well, and I, and I think uh, it, it also, the, uh, the people, I'm a native Vermonter. I was actually born in Burlington. And, um, but I can remember the people boom in the six, late 60s when all the hippies sort of descended on Vermont. Oh, but, yeah. the, but the hippies are sitting at this table now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know. <awesome. laughs> so, yeah, th that presents a problem. And, and part of the, the problem, the only area that I think is really not uh, having demographic issues of, of a declining population is Chittenden County. No, Chittenden County. And a lot of that is due to the refugee and the new American um, community right. that have moved right. in. Our schools are stable and our... Um, it, it's going to end up now because of the national policy. It's impacted the fact that um, the rest of the state hasn't grown as fast as it probably could have. If if we had been able to have the number welcome the number of new Americans that we probably would have wanted to, <laughs> right. we would be in better shape financially. Uh, well, we, that's the way you have to do it. Huh? Uh, that's the way the country's grown for since at least the 1840s. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, immigration. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is immigration. I mean, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, I happen to be part Native American, so I was part of me anyway. Was was here to begin with, but but you're right. That's what's grown the population, and we've we've put a squeeze on that. And the impact, unintended impact of that, is we do not have the people we need to run businesses, to uh, to do the day, taking care of people. Bur right. The Chittenden County area has almost a zero unemployment. Yeah, it's so close. It's you have guest workers, right? If we didn't have the people coming over from Plattsburgh, that's why the f the ferry boat up in pl between B Plattsburgh and Grand Isle is like a New York City subway. That thing runs every five minutes, right? Twenty four seven. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it's it's it, crazy. Yeah. And the popular, you know, the the people that work in Vermont that live over in Plattsburgh, mm -hmm. and Plattsburgh has the lowest electric rates in the country. The they commute to here. It's it's called guest workers. They used to have that in Berlin. <coughs> when I was in the army in Germany, uh -huh. the biggest one of the biggest issues why they didn't want to pull the wall down was because the Turkish community, which who were guest workers, were right next to the Armenian community in eastern Berlin. A lot of those guys were military guys, and so when that wall did come down, it was put. To, <laughs> well, and you know, it's not just the, you talk about the, the, the ferry. Go down to Addison County. Oh, with the bridge. The bridge. The, there, I know a significant number of people who live in that area of, across the bridge in New York who commute up to Burlington I every know. day. I well, know. They, well, they had to run when the bridge dropped. You remember that created a chaos. Yeah. Because right. the, it was immediate. Uh, it took them a little bit of a time before they could get the sub, uh, the ferry boat running back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then when that was running, that was an equal all 24-7 type of thing every couple of minutes because you had to handle the, the volume. volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. So I, I think one of the things that, that we, we hope people take away from this is that the population in Vermont and the demographics in Vermont matter a lot. Yeah. And we need to be paying more attention to it because it's going to imp have implications across the whole state. Right. Um, mm -hmm. What we'd like to do is to wrap up right now and uh, mm -hmm. get a hold of people at Cove if you have some ideas, um, if you have some questions or ideas. Thank you very much.